this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild a SUHD8, and we're going to go from this to this. Now, before we start, I want to say going into this project, I did not know anything about these, but what I did is I scoured the internet and read a ton of forum posts as well as watched some other videos that were older. And I'm going to try to combine all the tips and tricks that I learned into one video. If I get anything wrong, please let me know in the comments. I love to learn more. Let's start by just getting to the disassembly. All right, to start off with, I want to say what you should do before you begin with any of these rebuilds is you should take some good photos of your carb because the fuel bowl can go on different sides. It can be installed wrong as well as the, uh, the linkages and whether or not there's, it's just, they can be all different. The other thing you want to do is probably order a rebuild kit right away. I got these ones somewhere online, but I got the master rebuild kit that has the diaphragm as well as the shaft seals and it comes with a uh, needle and seat, all sorts of stuff. So get the good one just because you don't want to be halfway through rebuilding this and need more parts. What I like to do is just have a little magnetic bowl and throw things in piles. First we're just going to pull the dash pot. Actually what I'm going to do is take off this overflow line from the float area. There's going to be a goofy three-sided washer thing and aluminum washer. We're just going to set this aside for now. My background, I don't really know much about these carbs. I've never worked on them before until now and I don't really have any opinion on how well they work because my car is not currently running. But I will say that they're not very complex carbs compared to a four barrel holly or something. There's way fewer parts. It's kind of interesting right here. This is where you typically put your oil and there's a shock absorber in here uh, as well as a spring and that shock absorber goes in here and this is your piston. And so what happens, from what I understand, you open your throttle like this. This uh, lets more air in and then that air pushes up on this piston which pulls the needle out of this seat here and then that is what allows more fuel to go in. So more air going through the carb, the higher this is going to lift and the more fuel is going to come in. So that's that's how it's metered. It's really simple. The fuel goes in here, there's a float here to provide the correct amount of fuel in here and then this just goes up and down. There are a bunch of clever little things on here. This is part of the choke mechanism. We'll get to that in a second. Um, in fact, I think we're going to take this uh, this choke stuff off right now, just so it doesn't get damaged. All right, so here's the float area. Now, one thing you can do, we're going to be replacing the needle and seat in here too, is you can shake your float. I don't hear anything in this one. It might still be bad, but these brass floats go bad. One of the other carbs... Hear that liquid sound? That's fuel stuck inside this float. So for this car, because uh, I don't want to deal with redoing this again, we're just going to get some aftermarket floats that cannot leak, some, some ones made out of modern foam. Alright, on top of this uh, float bowl, what you need to do is grab the large end of this little shaft here. There we go. And now we're going to see when the last time someone was in these carbs because if there's a Viton, Vitron tip, nope, 100% brass and you can actually see the wear on the very tip of that thing. So these have been in here quite a while. Um, these carbs definitely didn't work so it's a good thing we're changing them. The other thing you want to check is your shaft seal. This feels pretty good so I'm just going to leave it. We can pull the piston out and don't mix up your piston with your with your dash pots either. Um, you can look in here, I like to hold this up to a light and just look for a big gap here, see how well it's seating. But right now this whole thing is disgusting so we need to just keep stripping it. This is your mixture screw. There's going to be a little rubber washer and curved piece of metal on the bottom of the spring to help seal this. It's probably deteriorated, your rebuild kit should have some new stuff. So there's the washer, and then here is the, the rubber seal. There you go. Wow, this wasn't even tight. That's crazy. So the fuel goes into this 
float area right here and then it transfers via tube into here where the main jet is. Now oh, this should come out. There's going to be a spring in here. You're going to want to clean this pretty well. It's going to be all nasty from all the sediment from the fuel that does get in there to drop into the bottom. Now we're going to get to this diaphragm. Um, this one actually looks a little more flexible. First carb I took apart, this just shattered like hard plastic. So there's a reason this wasn't working along with the uh, stuck float. I have not found a good way to get the jet out yet. So what I have been doing is just mangling it with a pair of okay well just trying to do whatever i can to get it out the other thing that you can do is you might be able to sneak this past uh the jet here to get this part off but what we're going to try is loosening the choke assembly the choke assembly is really clever on this this is your choke arm and there's a little cam right here and when the choke arm moves, this shaft is supposed to move up and down. And that's actually what your idle speed sits at. So when you pull the choke lever, it actually opens this up a little bit um, because this there's a spring here that's pulling this down. You'll see what I mean in a second. Let's just pull it off for now. Oh good, it's not totally frozen. So on the first carb, this choke shaft was completely corroded into the carb. And yeah, it took uh, some torches and stuff to get that out of there. So we're just gonna wiggle this out for now. Probably gonna sand that and polish it a little bit before reinstalling it. Now that that's out of there, this should be able to come off pretty easily. Again, pretty gross. You're gonna wanna make sure all this stuff is freed up and uh, not corroded. So now we have the jet here. Again, we wanna try to get that out. There we go twist and pull. This is junk. New one should be in your kit. Now we need to get this off. Um, this 18 millimeter socket should fit there pretty good, but it's really hard to do if this carb is moving around. So I'm going to run into my other garage. I'm not going to film it, but I'm just going to put a healthy chunk of this carb in my vise and then smack this with a hammer just to loosen this. Actually, I tried it right here. I just took this flat part of the carb, threw this on here. And then just took a heavy hammer and just tapped this a few times and uh, she came loose. So that's good. Don't even need to go to the other garage. All right. There we go. This carb is stripped. The only thing I have not taken off is the guide for the piston. I'm going to leave that in there because I don't care. And then also there's this plug which has a tiny little e-clip right there. I don't understand what that's for. Maybe it's for a feature this carb didn't have, but we're gonna leave that there. Um, again, this throttle shaft feels good, so I'm just gonna leave it. We're gonna send it and see what happens. All right, now we just gotta clean this up. Now that it's stripped, I'm gonna be using a plastic brush and a parts washer, I'm not gonna film it. And then for some of the other parts that are a little more corroded, I'm gonna be using a brass wire brush just to help get it all clean. Be right back after these messages and come back with all clean parts. We'll put this thing back together. All right, now that everything is clean, I want to talk about adding some bling to these things. Now, I leave the car body alone. I'm not building a show car, but it'd, it'd be cool if they looked a little better. I'm going to focus where uh, you can actually see the carb. So anything underneath or the, the car body itself, I don't care about. So we're just going to polish these three pieces as they will have the most impact. I'm actually just going to do a brush finish on this because... Trying to get this mirror polished all the way down here is annoying. And honestly, I think that this looks pretty great. Um, there's a little bit of a band where it's not as brushed uh, right near the ears. But you know what? The amount of effort to go from this to fully polished, probably quite high, especially if you wanted to maintain it right there. So what I did is I copied uh, Adam from Living With A Classic and what his method was, which is brilliant, is to just use a threaded rod. I think this is a uh, half inch, I'm not sure. And we're just going to take a washer and a nut and do this. And then all we need to do is chuck the dash pot in a drill press. And then all we need to do is use some different grit sandpapers to try to get this thing to clean up. So we're going to go do that. And then we're going to polish the float and the float cap and call it good. 
We're gonna start with 220, I think, to really cut into it. I'm gonna go to time lapse. Well, there you go, brushed down to a thousand grit. I think this looks kind of cooler than the polished. I did not get in between the ears there quite as much, but you know what, it's gonna look great when it's on the car. Now let's polish the fuel bowl and the uh, float cover. Bling bling, check that out. Looks pretty good. I mean, this again, this is not a show car. I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit and make it look a little better. So I'm happy with it. All right, now that everything is cleaned up, we're gonna do a couple things before we reassemble. This is the choke lever. Just take 1200 grit and we're just gonna, oh, oh yeah. We're just gonna, we're just gonna scuff this up a little bit just to get rid of some of the corrosion on the very surface here. I guess let's start with the metering screw. We're going to need the gasket and the uh, washer for this. So in the kit, the gasket is like a nitrile. We're going to jam that in there. And then the washer is copper. And what you want to do to start is just bottom it out. Don't torque it down, but just bottom it out for now. We'll get to tuning later. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cleaned up piston and drop that in there. Put the spring on here. Put the dash pot on. Secure the dash pot with a couple screws here. We're gonna to wanna to do now, now that the piston's all the way down, so I'm gonna thread this in here. And while I'm threading it in there, I'm gonna take the main jet and put it on here, like so. Now we're just gonna tighten this by hand and see if we can get it close. The problem here, or not the problem, but the issue is that there's a lot of slop in this uh, main jet to the jet holder type deal. And so what you want to do is tighten it down a few times until this piston closes all the way without any assistance. Actually, that is feeling pretty good. See how it comes all the way down? That's what you want. And you want this in here to make sure that it, it does it. If you don't have this in here, it's going to always do that. So put this jet in here all the way. And then, again, we're just going to... Make sure it, it goes all the way down. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna try torquing it down a little bit. Again, we're gonna move the piston out of the way. Sometimes this will take you a couple tries. Sometimes you'll get it right away. We'll, uh, we'll see if it's still good. Okay, so see how there's that little bit of a gap? Somehow when I tightened it, it must have just moved a little bit, and now it's no longer good. Put the jet back in. And just tighten it by hand here. You want to hear that click, hear that? That means it's bottoming all the way out. That's what we want to hear once this is tight. Might take you a few tries to get it, but you'll get it. All right, after a few minutes of trial and error, check this out. This is the sound you want to hear. So this has been tightened. The jet, when I put it all the way in, and then I lift the piston, you're going to hear that click. So that's centered properly. That should work pretty good, I think. All right, now we're gonna take the choke assembly, throw that on there, take the main jet, make sure you line that up with the holes. And then we're gonna take our new spring, which should be included in your rebuild kit. 
can put that there. And then the, uh, the fuel bowl assembly. All right, now that that's on there, you can take your choke rod, and I've already lubed this up with white assembly lube, and you're gonna put that in from the bottom here until it rests on this cam, like so. And you're gonna go up top, and you're going to take this spring, put it there, and then thread this in right here. What you want to do when you're threading this down is make sure that the cam uh, shoe or whatever you call this part that interacts with the choke assembly is parallel with this screw because this is what's going to change the idle speed when you put your choke on. And these need to line up. There we go. Alright, and now you can kind of see how this choke system works. It's really cool. If I, if I shut this all the way and I pull on this right here, you can see that it pulls this whole choke rod down right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually crack open the, uh, the butterfly valve here. You can kind of see it like that. And that spring is what's pulling it back. And then there's another spring in the bottom of the fuel bowl here. And that's what's making this make sure that it stays on there. So just make sure this is working. All right, so now that that's assembled, that's looking pretty good. We have to move over to the uh, and the replacement needle will have that nice anti-wear tip right there. So this is uh, an upgrade. It'll also have uh, the shaft, the replacement shaft for the the float pivot here. Now if you didn't mess this up when you took it apart you shouldn't have to really readjust this. I like to just take one of these and gently press it in there a little bit. And lastly you would put your float in here. I'm not gonna like put these in here permanently because I again ordered replacement ones that do not have fuel in them and will not leak ever. This is going to go back on here. The rebuild kit will also come with a new gasket for this. So then you're going to put this on here and overflow line and we are done. All right, there you go, boys. Hopefully that helped you out. That is how you rebuild an SU HD8 carb. Again, I did not do the throttle shaft because uh, mine seemed to be still pretty good. You can test once the car is running to see if that is an issue by just smearing a little bit of grease on the pivots and that will seal it up temporarily to help you diagnose it. But stay tuned for more updates on this car. The next steps are we need to redo the intake manifold and then we need to drain the gas and see if it fires up. So we're getting closer. Before I go, I wanna give a shout out to Adam over at Living With A Classic. If you're into Classic Jags, please check out his site. I'll put a link up here. And also, Jag Lovers has been an indispensable resource for all my frustrations with this car so far. So, thanks dudes. Till next time.